Recorded Books and RB Digital present All About Madam C.J. Walker by Alelia Bundles. Narrated by Karen Chilton. Preface Madam C.J. Walker was one of the most successful American businesswomen of the early 20th century. She is remembered as an entrepreneur and pioneer of the modern hair care industry. She also made her mark as a philanthropist, a patron of the arts, and a political activist who spoke out against racial injustice. Walker had very humble beginnings. She was born Sarah Breedlove on a plantation in Delta, Louisiana, in 1867, two years after the end of the Civil War. Her parents, Owen and Minerva Breedlove, died before she was seven years old. As a child, she had almost no formal education. She married at a very young age and was widowed when she was 20. In 1888, she and her three-year-old daughter, Lelia, moved to St. Louis, where her older brothers were barbers. She joined St. Paul African Methodist Episcopal Church and met very kind female church members who helped her adjust to the city. She never forgot their generosity. The example they set became a model for her own philanthropy. Walker worked as a laundress for many years and made very little money, but she was determined to give her daughter more opportunities than she had had. There is an old saying that necessity is the mother of invention. This certainly was true for Walker. She was losing her hair because of a severe scalp infection and was desperate for a cure for her bald spots. She often said that her formula came to her in a dream after she prayed for a solution. But she also took advice from others until she finally came up with the right combination of ingredients. In 1906, after she married her third husband, Charles Joseph Walker, she began calling herself Madam C.J. Walker. She also began selling an ointment called Madam Walker's Wonderful Hair Grower that became very popular. In 1908, she opened Lelia College of Beauty Culture to train sales agents to use her products. In 1910, she moved to Indianapolis, Indiana, where she built a factory. By 1911, her business was already so successful that she was able to make a $1,000 contribution to the local Young Men's Christian Association, YMCA, for a new building. She moved to Harlem in 1916 and became involved in political activities, including the National Association for the Advancement of Colored Peoples, NAACP, anti-lynching campaign. In 1917, she hosted one of the first large gatherings of American businesswomen when she convened her Madam C.J. Walker Beauty Culturists Union in Philadelphia. Walker developed an international business with customers all over the United States, Central America, and the Caribbean. She provided jobs for African-American women. Instead of being hired by someone else's maids, laundresses, and farm workers, they were able to work for themselves. When Walker died in 1919, she left more than $100,000 to political causes, organizations, and educational institutions. In 1998, she became the 21st African American to be featured in the United States Postal Service's Black Heritage Series. There are also two national historic landmarks, the Madam Walker Theater Center, a cultural arts center in Indianapolis, and Villa Lawaro, her Westchester County, New York mansion that bear her name. More than a century after she founded her company, the Madam C.J. Walker Beauty Culture line of products is manufactured by Sundial Brands and sold throughout the United States. At the root of Walker's success was her belief in her high-quality products, her gift for marketing, and her ability to lead and inspire others.
Sample complete. Ready to continue?